<laughs> All right, let's get per day. <laughs> We'll probably start with the laughter. <laughs> hey everybody, and welcome to Crochet Therapy. I'm your host, Barbara, and this is Tanya, Hi. my sweet sister-in-law. And we are here, we're already having a good time. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're glad that you're here, because you're going to have a good time too. We are getting ready to do this little number, scrubby side, cotton side, and this is perfect sponge for washing dishes, washing countertops. It's squishy. It's completely washable. And, um, you know, I just don't like those store-bought sponges. I love this though. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is, um, let's go over the requirements. Are we still on? Yeah, we are. Okay. I know. Hope not a, not a hot mess today. <laughs> Okay, so the requirements are, <laughs> Tanya's like, oh, yeah, that ain't going to happen. We're going to be a hot mess. We're always a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, but we're fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so what you need is some cotton, cotton yarn, and um, I changed up my color from this one. I really love this color, but I thought, well, let me try this in... Uh, like a burgundy. This is called Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is the Hobby Lobby cotton yarn, but you can easily use any kind of cotton yarn. Um, use the, um, what is that other one called? The um, Peaches and Cream. Walmart brand. Yay! Yeah, that's my leftovers from a market bag. From a market bag. And those are pretty colors. I can't oh, wait to you. see that. <laughs> so I'm going to use this Bordeaux. And then I have this Scrubology Scrubby Cotton. And if you can see, it has blues and like a burgundy and white in it. So I can't wait to see that together. And I have the blue to go with. Yes. This. And this one has white and green and yellow and that pretty blue and gosh that matches almost perfectly yeah. i can't wait to see that that should be beautiful i think it will and this is the b yarn yarn b yarn b mm -hmm. scrubology that's cool and that's our microphone right there so we're not we're going to try not blow you out <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is you take your seriously airboat <laughs> oh hello happy people on the water oh okay so pull the guts out of your your cotton your yarn barf and what we're gonna do is see if this boat goes away <laughs> I think it will there's a dock right there and they load like it's going to the distance. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a slip knot. And um, to make a slip knot, you go around your fingers, make a cross, hold it. And I am using an H hook this time. And what size hook are you using? I'm Tanya? using the eye. The eye hook. Okay, cool. Because you can use an eye, an H or an I. I'm using the H. I tend to crochet a little um, loose. Tanya's using the I. I pull everything tight. She pulls everything tight. So hopefully, I bet you we come out pretty even. But um, so then you take your hook and you make a knot. If you need further instructions on how to do a slip knot, um, there. Are I have instructions out there on my YouTube page, and then also there are tons of them out there. So what we're gonna do is chain 20. So you make the slip knot, and then you do 20. Four, five. And, oh, I'm gonna lose count, <laughs> but I'll count it again in a minute. Um, and like I said, we're doing this real time. So we're gonna do this with you. And let me see how many I have. Okay. 
Okay, look at that. I have 20. So you chain 20. Are you there? I'm there. Okay, good. So we want to do this all together. So what you're going, going to do is you're going to ch um, do a single crochet all the way across. Um, skip the first chain. Don't count what's on your hook. Skip that first chain and go directly into the second chain from the hook and do a single crochet. And do a single crochet all the way to the end. So you should have 19 single crochets. Make sure you have 19. Um, and that's not too large of a number to count each time. You want to make sure that your um, that your sponge turns out. Oops, sorry about that. You want to make sure that your sponge turns out evenly. And I, for one, um, in the past and even now, sometimes have a hard time with keeping a straight edge. So. I, um, I have perfected the way that I keep a straight edge. If I'm ever in doubt, what I do is take a stitch marker and at the beginning of each row, I feel like I have a bug, but I think it's just a hair. There we go. Um, at the beginning of each row, I will put a stitch marker in the first stitch that I make. And that way, when I turn my work and go back, I make sure that I end on that stitch because sometimes at the end of a row, you know, it can be a little muddled up. You don't know what your last stitch was. So that's why it's important, especially at the beginning, to count. You doing okay, Tanya? I am. Okay, it awesome. It helps if you could see your work. <laughs> yeah. Do you need your glasses? I need them off to see. <laughs> oh, I see. Me too. My glasses are for seeing long distance. And guess what? I have lost my glasses. I haven't had them for a couple weeks. Um, I haven't needed them because, you know, I've been inside this whole time, so I really didn't worry about it. But now that I go back to work on Monday, huh, I might need to go look for those things. I don't know. <laughs> so I've been working at home too and haven't been wearing my glasses around the house. The other day I jumped out, went out in the driveway, jumped in the van, took off, backed up and then I was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I better go get those. That trip was short. <laughs> <laughs> that was a short trip. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm at the end. Tanya's almost there. I'm getting there. Yep. <laughs> and um, we're going to do this together, but I just want to tell you what we're going to do next. And at the end of each row, we are going to, whoops, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and we're going to ignore that chain one, that's not a stitch, and we're going to go into the very first stitch, um, the last stitch that we made, which is going to be now the, new, the first stitch, and we're going to do a single crochet, go into both loops, and we're gonna go back across. And so what we're gonna do is do a single crochet on each row, at the end of each row, make sure you have 19 stitches, and we're going to do a single crochet, turn our, uh, not a single crochet, sorry, we're doing a single crochet all the way across, make sure you have 19. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn our work and go into that first stitch and single crochet all the way across. So every single row will have 19 stitches. We're going to do this for 30 rows. So 30 rows at the end of each row, chain one and turn your work. Make sure you have 19 each time and you'll be fine. And when we get a couple um, rows in, I'll show you a trick that I do to count my rows. So how was your week this week, Tanya? It was very good. Very, very busy. Good. 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 I hope this microphone is working and it can catch our voices. We maybe should have done a test run, huh? Hey, yeah, <laughs> we might should Let's have. make sure we talk loud enough. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. And it's um, it's got a nice little pattern. Single crochet makes a nice little pattern. Now we're going to air this. This is going to be aired on Monday, June 1st. Happy June. Um, but we're actually filming it on a Saturday. So that's why all the boaters are out and um, people are having a great time. They're, um, they're self-isolating out on the lake. <laughs> so they're having fun. I even hear a jet ski out there. That's nice. I didn't think about all the activity that we might encounter on a Saturday. Did I skip a stitch? Looks like you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was an awful large <laughs> loop there. Yeah. So no matter what your um, crochet skill level, this is something that um, even a brand new crocheter can do simply because um, it's just one type of stitch, a single crochet. Um, and it is a very good one to practice on as far as keeping your edges nice and straight. When you get to the end, count, count your stitches and I'm going to go ahead and count mine. I have 19, so I'm doing good. I did one chain. Sorry, trying to show you. I did one chain. And now I am going to turn my work. And do you see that hole right there? Right here. This is the chain one. And this is where my first stitch is going to go. That first stitch is going to go right in there. That's the first, that's the last stitch I did on the other row. So it will be the first stitch that I do on this current row. Now, once you get off of that first chain, once you get your, your uh, single crochet in there, then everything just goes so much faster and easier because you have something to hold on to and um, you're not fiddling with that um, <laughs> you're not fiddling with the um, with the chain because that can be you know that can be a little challenging so all right so we're going to keep going until we get 19 rows and like I said um, this is live action so we're live action crocheting with you um, for some of you you may sit there and say I am not watching 19 um, excuse me 30 did I say 19 rows 19 stitches 30 rows <sighs> I wish I could get my number straight <laughs> um, 19 stitches across 30 rows high some of you may not have time for that you may say, you know, I don't want to watch this all the way through, and that's okay. Fast forward until the end, um, well, near the end, where we incorporate our scrubby yarn, and then we can give you instructions for that. But we're just going to go ahead and crochet along. For those of you who have been stuck in the house for a while, and you just want somebody to crochet with, go ahead. So we're going to be quiet, and we're going to crochet for a little bit. I'm going to count. Perfect. have Diet Coke in my cup. What do you have in yours, Tanya? Fresca. Mm. 
forgot to ask you if you wanted a straw. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> much easier once it gets thicker it is once you get past that first row it goes quicker and um, it's like the stitches just are waiting for you you mm -hmm. know you're not having to hunt and and find them the stitches are waiting for you Do you make a crochet face? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. You know, it's so funny because um, you watch guitarists and they have a guitar face, you yes. know, and they're like wiggling their <laughs> mouth and everything. And sometimes I'm crocheting and my husband will say, are you okay, honey? I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm constantly. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, you, you just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> So apparently I'm making my crochet face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if you don't think you have a crochet face, crochet in front of the mirror for a little bit and then just kind of peek up and you'll be like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I make that face when I crochet. Yeah, I make a crochet face. <laughs> oh. that <laughs> the bug landed oh <laughs> you got room i do i kind of filled that little table i never finished the um the little table cover i was making oh well maybe i need to do a live action to finish that cover table i think i need to do a live action to finish everything in my house i keep starting new whips and uh. And poor Justin, he still hasn't gotten his Christmas blanket. I still have to finish it. Oh, you haven't finished that. No! <laughs> oh, poor guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so maybe by his birthday, but that already passed. No, it already passed. <laughs> oh my goodness. This silliness. That's me. I just, I, and it's not because I didn't have time because I did finish several other things in the meantime. Mm -hmm. I just found other things to, um, to get excited about. Um, like I made both my granddaughter's outfits. I started a blanket for my grandson. I made your present and finished it for your birthday in <laughs> August. Good Lord. So, which is coming up very fast, by it the way. It is coming too fast. <laughs> I mean, when this airs, it's going to be June 1st. Yeah. I thought the beginning, at, you know, in 2019, in December, I was so happy to be done with 2019 and so excited about 2020 because I was thinking, you know, 2020 is perfect vision. It's going to be a great year. <laughs> I'm going to... Get oh, my... no, Tuesday was actually on Tuesday. <laughs> Everything seemed like it was going to work out. I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Taco Tuesday. It was um, um, Cinco de Mayo was on Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> it just seemed like everything was going to be good. You know, we were going to have 2020 vision about our future. And surprise. Surprise. So that didn't happen, but you know, I can't say that I, I haven't learned a lot about myself during this time. Um, I've learned that I'm a terrible work from home person. I am terrible at it. I get distracted so easily. Well, I mean, I guess all I have to do is look at the whips that I keep creating and that should tell me something, right? Because I'm easily distracted by pretty. And, um, 
and shiny. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, um, Monday I go back to work um, in the office. Um, I believe five days a week. There may be some days when I um, I do like a half day from home if I have a, an appointment or something like that, then I may do that, depending on how that works out. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it too, because you know also where I work, I, are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I am. Okay, good. Where I work, they are very good about um, making the workspace ergonomic, and they've actually um, completely renovated the 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 whole um, every employee's workspace has been renovated. We have sit stand desks, so a push of a button and and the whole thing goes up, so we can stand. We have new chairs. We oh, have nice. um, new computer systems coming. Um, and I, I asked for, um, because we use dual monitors, so you could still get dual monitors or you could get this one really big, like, like sweeping one like that. And it's like uh -huh. pretty and white. See, I, I like shiny. I can't help it, but it was really pretty. And I thought, oh, that's really kind of cool. So I got the one screen that's extra wide and it kind of has a, a bevel to it or what do you call that a curve to mm -hmm. it you know yeah so they're gonna uh, be installing those so I'm really excited about that so my workspace at work is so ergonomic and so um, convenient um, and I converted my craft room into it and so I'm using my craft table which is extra high and I had an extra high chair which was fine but I couldn't do eight hours in it because my legs would dangle, I'm a short girl, my legs would dangle and then my feet would swell because all the, all the just dangling, you know? Right. So I went to a shorter chair. <laughs> so look at this. So I'm, my desk is like right here. I have my laptop here. And so my arms are up like this and I'm typing like this. Now I went from a dual monitor, big monitors, two of them, uh -huh. to a laptop. Oh. <laughs> and so some of the things I could blow up, you know, as far as, um, the size of the font and everything. I know uh -huh. I'm talking, I'll catch up to you. And um, the size of the <laughs> font and everything. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, some things I just could not make large enough. So I'm like, Ugh. and then if I get too close, it gets too blurry, so I have to back up. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. One time I, um, I actually had to take a photo with my phone, blow it up so I could read it and then delete it. And then another time, I copy and pasted it and put it in a Word document and blew it up so that I could read it. And you know, it's just been just challenging. So I'm I'm looking forward to going back in office. I really am. Plus, I know you can't tell this, but I do like to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the worst part, right? And um, I don't know why we have we have a thing. It's like an instant chat thing at work, and it's like a little chat room that just our department would go into and like I'm wanting to chat and everybody else is like working what's that about <laughs> I I want to chat with people <laughs> I'm like I miss people <laughs> so yeah it'll be good it'll be good to go back to work um, I've been going on Wednesdays and like right from the start when I when my manager comes and you know says good morning to me or whatever and I'll I'll just say you know Sorry, Kyle, I haven't talked to people in a while, so if I like start running at the mouth, you know, just, <laughs> just kind of give me a signal or something, you know, okay, you need, you know, it's time to get back to work. He's like, oh no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> He's like, I feel the same way, you know, we, we need to talk to people. So I try to be mindful of that, I really do. Um, and yeah. not just keep chit-chatting to people, but you know. At one point, I asked everybody on, on our little chat room group, are we social distancing in here too? Because <laughs> I was like, nobody's responding to me. I need some attention. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's one of my, oh, I, I, it's always been, oh my gosh, I guess I've always um, wanted proper attention, you know? And if I don't get it, I, yeah. I'm not a happy girl. <laughs> so, I mean, all you got to do is nod your head at me or something, you know, and I'll just, I can keep talking. I don't care. 
Oh, but don't ignore me. I am so sorry for all the um, the airboats in the background, and I I really hope that it's not. Um, I hope it's not hindering your um, happiness of the day. You know what I just realized too? I didn't turn off the sound, so I hope we don't ding on the phone. I forgot to oh, mute it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do we count the 30? 30, 30 rows. The, mm -hmm. Counting the, the first chain. The first chain. No. Row. What we're okay. going to do is when you. Um, so when you turn your work, um, there's one side you'll see, um, let me get really close so I can show you. Okay, so this side, can you see this extra row right here? So if you turn it on this side, you see how this is a bump and this is a bump and this is a bump and this is a bump do you see that oh yeah and so what you'll do is you'll go to this side and this is how you do it this is two rows this is two rows this is two rows this is two rows and this is two rows so don't count from this side because you see that extra little bump on the bottom and um, let's count from this. When you see perfect, when you see perfect, um, perfect little rows, then that's how you count. So this is two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, okay. And that's how you count it. Um, so I have ten on here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, let's see yours. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this one is has the extras, so then this one, see how that, um, it's like a row. Yeah, it looks like a row. So that's two and four. So I think you're, you're working on row number five right now. Okay. I think that's what you're on right okay. now. So. And always make sure that you do one chain at the end and turn and go back and single crochet into that first stitch. And these are US terms. So if you happen to be watching from the UK, and I should have said that be from the beginning. Um, A little noisy out here with all the little the little buggers <laughs> they are having a song fest they say go to the country because it's nice and peaceful and quiet <laughs> <laughs> they don't know <laughs> those little creatures those critters make a lot of noise <laughs> Every now and then, periodically, I'll count my, my stitches just to make sure I'm still in line. I'm so off. <laughs> okay, I still have 19. How are I'm you 16. off? I have 16. You have 16? Wow. Going in? Let's take a look. <laughs> yep, you are. You are. Okay, so this right here is a stitch. This right here is a stitch. Uh-huh. And um, I missed it. And then 
let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Hmm. Yeah. I started with twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Frog it. <laughs> well, let's take a look. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my question is, you are doing a single crochet, mm -hmm. you insert your hook, pull up the yarn, uh -huh. you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you may have missed a couple from somewhere, but your sides look very straight. So I would, if I were you, just make sure I go into this one. Okay. And 17 is your new number. Oh, 17 okay. is the new 19 for you. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, you don't have to frog it because to be honest with you, this is a sponge and it's, um, you know, somebody's not going to look at that sponge and go, 17? Really? <laughs> you okay. know. So if you're okay with it and yours is the same length as mine. Yeah. So, um, I used a smaller hook and you used a bigger hook yeah. and we're about the same size. So, huh, interesting. I love the colors that we've chosen. They're pretty. Yeah. And um, like I said in, in the um, one of the previous morning coffee and crochets, um, we are going to add to our collection um, I've got a little um, scrubby, scrubby for pans, and um, we're going to call it a pan scrubby. Um, and um, that is easy, and we're going to use the same color combination. So I'm going to make one in, in this blue combination so that it can go as a set. Um, so we have a pan scrubby coming. We have a dishcloth coming and um, a hot pad. Um, can you think of anything else that we might want to add to it, Tanya? Is a hot pad made out of cotton? Yes. A hot pad needs to be made out of cotton because if you use acrylic and you truly put something hot like right from the stove or oven on it, it's plastic and it will melt. Oh, okay. So you have to make sure that you use cotton, excuse me, or at least 85% cotton. Let's uh -huh. see what this scrubby yarn is. That's interesting, let's see. Um, well, it says scrubology cotton, 100% cotton. Okay, so that's good. So there's no worry here either. That's good. 
The one that I'm using, the color is called Nice to Meet You. I think that's pretty cool. Let's see. <laughs> and Tanya's is turquoise. Isn't that a pretty color? That oh my goodness. Cool color. Yeah. Now here's the thing too. If you weren't able to find the um, scrubby yarn, just make this whole thing in cotton. So instead of, um, well, you'll make 30 rows. And then when we get to the 30th row, um, that last row, we always, um, we double the yarn. So we add the scrubology yarn or the scrubby yarn along with this cotton. So at that point, if you're just using cotton, you could um, double your cotton yarn. You could use a contrast in color or, um, or you could just continue on and make 45 rows. Um, and because what we're going to do is um, put it together as a sponge. So it's really up to you if you have extra cotton yarn in a contrasting color or maybe a variegated color uh, that would just give that side a little extra um, interest, then by all means do that and it will um, make it a little bit uh, a little bit puffier, a little bit sturdier. So let's do that. Do you still have 17? <laughs> I haven't counted lately. <laughs> yes, I'm at 17 Yay! still. <laughs> How do you like that um, clover hook? Is it different for you? Yeah, it's um, a lot thicker than what I've been using for a while. Okay. Um, Have you been using just an, um, an aluminum hook? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I can't find all my others. I know. <laughs> They're in my whips. <laughs> right? <laughs> Folks, full disclosure, I was going to get, um, I have two complete sets of these clover hooks and so I was going to get Tanya an eye hook. I was going to use that eye hook and I was going to go get Tanya an eye hook. I couldn't find it. I have no idea what whip it's in. I yeah. have no idea, which is why I bought the second set of clover hooks. <laughs> so you would. So I would have a spare. Right. I'm running out. Oh my gosh. So we're going to keep the clover company and business um, and I have um, the boy ergonomic hooks um, I have to tell you at first I was such a fan because I went from completely um, aluminum hooks no ergonomic to it the ends would hit my my hand right here and rub rub it raw the more I crocheted um, just the way it was shaped or something I don't know so then I found the boy E O Y E ergonomic hook and um, those hooks were um, they're thicker they're um, really thick 
um, wide, I guess, the ergonomic part. And I loved them. And then one day I was crocheting with one of the hooks and I was like, what is going on here? Why, what am I doing wrong? I, I kept snagging my yarn and I was like, I've used this yarn before and it's not snagged before. What is going on? Well, my hook. So when you're holding it, you know, your the flat part for your thumb and the hook part should be all lined up. And this one, the hook was turned like this. And like the flat part was still here and the hook was turned. And it had been a while since I used that size, so I don't know if it came that way from the factory or if it turned on its own. Yeah. But that's not cool, boy. That's <laughs> not cool. And so, and I had three hooks that did that. Three hooks that were that way. And I, I can't get them twisted back. So I feel like they came that way from the factory. Um, and I am not one to take things back and I am not one yeah. to contact the company and complain. So this is me complaining to you, boy. Boy, <laughs> get your act together. <laughs> and that's it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm not calling you, I'm not writing you, I'm not sending this back with a full complaint letter, I'm not emailing you. <laughs> this is it. And I won't follow up either. I don't care. <laughs> New plant steak. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's too croquet. No, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Ugh. Because one of the ones I thought, oh, I found an eye hook mm -hmm. for you, and it was a boy, and it was crooked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like that. Okay, so I'm going to count my rows. And let's see, I'm going to count from this side because that's where all the pretty rows are. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I'm on 18. This would make a really nice bath mat too. Oh yeah. It would, as long as you don't have dogs that have long nails that might get caught in it. Yeah. Cause then true. they'll be coming through the house, dragging a <laughs> bath mat with them. Oh my goodness. But yeah, it really would and it would um, it would soak up all of the um, all of the water too. What if you had um, like a double strand of cotton in like that and another color or two of mm -hmm. those same um, and you used a bigger hook and um, you either went back and forth or you did a circular. Yeah. Um, I know Jennifer from Cinnamon Stitches, she does rugs all the time and she made this gorgeous rainbow half, like a half circle rug to go in front of her tub. And um, it was beautiful. It was really pretty. Um, and it was thick. Um, so, but you know, you wouldn't have to make a rainbow. You can just do a half circle. And so then the flat part goes up against the tub and then you have this circle part coming out, depending on how your bathroom is shaped, how much room you have. Yeah. You could do it in different ways. I would love to have um, like a small like um, breakfast nook with just a little round kitchen table and like uh -huh. four little chairs and and have um, a rug under it, you know? I just think yeah, that that would be that so, would be pretty. so pretty. Um, and there's something to be said about making your own rugs and blankets and things. And there's just so much, it's just a feeling of accomplishment and pride and, um, you know, I, I feel like, I know I'm silly, but I feel like a homesteader when I do things like this, you know, right, yeah. I feel like I am, um, you know, pretending to be a pioneer woman and I'm, I'm going to, 
you know, taking care of our family, taking care of our family and providing how we can provide. Um, my living room has not had, it has blinds on it, but it hasn't had any curtains or any balance or anything for a while. Two years, two years. Um, I think I am. And, um, Krista from the, uh, from the secret yarnery uh -huh. made a shawl in these really pretty, uh, flowers and it was like a cotton. Here we go. <laughs> It was a cotton, and so it was really kind of see-through. Um, you know, there were a lot of there was a lot of space in the flowers, and then she attached the flowers very loosely with like leaves or whatever. Um, and so it was very airy looking, and I loved that look. And I think I might make a valance very similar to that, where it's just you know very airy, and the flowers are hanging down in different colors of flowers with maybe the same color. To combine it you know going throughout all of the different color flowers I love color and um... <laughs> he didn't stay out long did he oh my goodness I think that's a new one. Oh, great <laughs> because airboats actually go out at night oh. and it's afternoon right now yeah so they're headed out they're headed out on? to the island yeah there's an island in this area here and they're headed out to the island the only airboat I've ever ridden was when we were uh, over at Lakeland at the singles retreat right and we all took a trip back to Inverness yes. to ride airboats yes Wild Bill's airboat rides <laughs> that was fun it was a lot of fun <laughs> um, I did that one and then um, my kids, Justin, I think it was, did um, his school did an airboat ride and they talked about like the ecosystem and the water and stuff and so I went on that field trip too and that was fun. I do like that. I wonder if Wild Bills is still in business. I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been out that way for a long right, time. Right, for a long time. <laughs> I have some friends at work that boat and airboat, and there's one group that they're actually a part of an airboat group club, and they, um, my friend and her, her husband, they actually own um, a piece of an island and they have a cabin out there very rustic um, no electricity or anything but the airboat group um, will go out and a lot of them have land out there and everything and they um, they all take care of that island and they um, keep it cleaned and keep it um, you know mowed where it needs to be mowed or whatever and um, and they have like a pavilion where they all eat together. So it's kind of a neat little thing and they do that most weekends actually. Um, so that's a very nice social thing for them. Um, and I know that that was hard when they had to do all the social distancing and you know, so I don't know if they're getting back together yet or not. I don't, I don't know, but, um, it was a fun little group for her. So. And then they, they also, during this gator hunting season, they'll go out and gator hunt. And um, well, she doesn't. <laughs> her husband and her son will, um, her grown son. So. my rose okay. 
two, four, six, eight. Let me do it this way. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay. Take a peek. edit that part out <laughs> I just stared at the screen to see <laughs> see how far we are do you need a break I'm okay okay Noticing that I pull it every time I go to the end of the row. <laughs> okay. Brings me joy. <laughs> Give it a yank. That's funny. <laughs> it's the little things that make us happy. <laughs> I think I hear my woodpecker starting. I hear a little knock, 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 knock. <laughs> that little woody that was out there this morning. Actually, that that I posted on Facebook was from six years ago oh, really? at our other house. <laughs> and um, it came up on my news feed. So wasn't he beautiful? Yes, he was gorgeous. Oh my goodness. He was a real woody and just... Woody Woodpecker, he was all in his glory. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful bird. But it came up on my Facebook news feed this morning and I was like, this is too pretty not to share again. Um, so I shared it. Now my husband was watching one of my videos and one of the episodes of Morning Coffee and Crochet and he was like, stop, stop the video and roll it back a little bit. And um, we watched it and right here on this railing, um, <laughs> a lizard just went right across, right behind me. He's like, did you know that lizard was behind you? I'm like, no, <laughs> nope, I sure didn't. <laughs> But um, I'm glad Rosie didn't see it because Rosie goes crazy chasing the lizards. <laughs> Thankfully, they're faster than she is. <laughs> she just goes, whoop, 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 where are you? <laughs> and they're like sticking their tongue out at her. <laughs> you can't catch me. 
<laughs> which is good because oh if I let my cats outside which I don't I don't believe and it's just my personal opinion and um, you know yours may differ and I respect you for that but it's my personal opinion for me that I don't let my cats be outside cats because my experience has not been good with that um, an outside cat has a tendency to get in the road to get killed um, and just various things that can happen to an outside domestic you know your fur baby and um, so I know at this point in my life I um, I want to have my fur baby safe and in the house with me so um, especially my kitties so and to be honest with you I leave the door open and they're like they're in there they're like we're good we're good <laughs> we have it really good here we have no desire to go outside in that wild world out there <laughs> <laughs> so um, and I'm very happy about that because you know if I had a cat that kept demanding to get outside I don't know what I would do so I've had a couple cats in my younger days that I would keep outside and they um, I've had a couple of them get hit by cars and just eat the wrong lizard oh gosh <laughs> yeah so I it's more for my protection even than theirs because I know my um, my heart can't handle it so I just keep them safe with me and they're they're mama boys and girls so they're fine with it they're not feeling left out or hindered by any means there goes a lizard across the porch thankfully in Florida oh Ooh, this is that's the kind you don't want to eat. Oh, <laughs> is that a, that's not a skink. No. Oh, let me see if I can show you. I'll work. Nope. nope, he's, he's gone. gone. He's gone. I was going to show you. He was completely black. And then underneath he has this orange thing that just goes blue, blue. And, um, oh, there he is. Oh, oh he's right chasing the other one. <gasps> is he? A carnivore? Yes, they all are. They are? He chased that little one that wasn't doing anything. He was eating bugs. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's the okay, one thing well, that I've was... learned over this time. <laughs> it's like the lizards eat bugs. <laughs> that was a little drama going on before us right here. <laughs> so we had a little tan lizard that was cute and tiny and was just like... I guess eating little little bugs and and um, then that one that, and I was getting ready to say well thankfully we only have little ones here and then that's when we both went oh because <laughs> the big black one came out with the little orange under under chin and um, and he was a big one and then I guess he spotted that little tan one and whew, off he went that was the type of lizard that my cat ate <gasps> that died oh no because that it one was has poisonous poison in it. oh man that red that runs down the back yeah i guess it's a warning system oh wow and your cat didn't heed that warning mm. huh poor kitty i know oh my goodness well my cats if we have a lizard that gets in the house thankfully it's usually only a little one um um but yeah my cats will tend to play with it and as a coping mechanism or an escape mechanism they'll drop their tail and they can grow a new one back so that's not a problem but then yeah. once they drop their tail then they, I come home and the cats have a present for me thank you kitties mm. not really what I wanted but that natural hunting instinct that they have so the thing with doing this in a single crochet it it does take longer to get the rows 
um, that you need. If we did something like a half double crochet or a double crochet, a half double crochet would be okay because it's still um, thick enough. A, a double crochet would be quicker because you would get the length that you needed faster, but it would have more holes in it. Um, and I really like the solidity of this single crochet when using it for, you know, dishes and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. okay, time to count. Oh, okay. Well, I'm at 32. I went a little too far. Oh. So. Mm -hmm. I'm still on 17. 17, that's okay. <laughs> You're 17 across, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, that's okay. All right, so I am going to, let's see, let me count it again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Yeah. So, a frogging I will go. this one it's okay all right so while Tanya is going to continue building her rows I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the next step so we're gonna keep our cotton connected we're not going to cut it off and we are going to take our scrubby yarn and we're gonna add that to our project so Just pull some yarn barf out, see if I can find a middle. Oh, nope. We're all looped still. I don't have an end. Here we go. I have an end finally. Okay. Sorry about that noise, guys. We're going to try this as I give these instructions. I want to make sure that you can hear me over all of the noise that is out here. Crazy noise. Okay. So I have my scrubby yarn and it's a mess, but I'm going to work through that. I actually don't mind working through yarn barf. Um, it doesn't upset me. It doesn't make me angry. I just, you know, I just feel like I'm taming the yarn, <laughs> like it's a wild beast or something. <laughs> so I'm going to leave a nice long uh, end just because it makes it easier on me when I'm actually um, threading in my, my ends. So I'm going to... Um, Let's see, am I gonna start right there or right there? Okay, I think I'm gonna chain one. So I have my yarn together and I'm holding it together. If you can see, I have the two strands together and I'm going to work this as one yarn. And so I'm at the end of a row and I'm going to chain one. 
okay? And then I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to run this tail of the scrubby yarn along the top for about four single crochets, okay? And what I'm going to do is just start single crocheting all the way across, making sure that I get both strands of this yarn, of this cotton yarn, the scrubby and the, um, the regular cotton. And I'm going to also make sure that I don't make it too tight, that I make sure that I'm making it, um, you know, making sure that I have room on that, on that hook. Do you see how I'm, see there's like some wiggle room in there? Um, because I don't want it to be so tight 